We are in Toronto at uh, Broad Street West with uh, Aprayita Saxena. Aprayita, how are you? Hi, Antonio. I'm good, thank you. How are you? Good. Uh, thank you for welcoming us on the uh, Music Therapy Center, which is part of the Canadian Music Therapy Fund, isn't it? Yes. And you're the center manager. So you can tell us what you do here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, welcome to the center, Antonio. And uh, yes, uh, this is the Music Therapy Center. We are on Dufferin and Bloor, mm -hmm. and we are an accessible center, uh, fully accessible. Uh, we have wheel trials uh, like right outside. Uh -huh. So yeah, and this is a project that has been funded by the Canadian Music Therapy Fund since uh, we've been here since around for the past uh, 20 years almost over here. And uh, yeah, we. We conduct music therapy sessions here for for individuals who are looking for something that's um, creative mm -hmm. um, and can be used to support their wellness goals, yeah. their mental health needs, and um, just uh, their overall qualitative uh, wellness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you're a musician. You're a musician. You're a musician. You're you're trying new music. Yes. Yes. And uh, how did you discover music therapy? Wow, that's a long story, but... Well, we have time, I think. <laughs> <laughs> You'll tell us. Um, so, in India, this happened in India. Mm -hmm. I, I was in a totally different field before entering music and music uh -huh. therapy. Yeah. Um, but I was looking for something that's more fulfilling, where I can see direct impact. Mm -hmm. And I think I was sort of burnt out in my corporate job and I, I wanted to take a break. Uh -huh. And I had training in Indian classical singing, uh, uh -huh. North Indian classical music. And uh, so I wanted to go back, I wanted to study for a while. And I didn't know how I wanted to do, use music in my life, but I knew that I wanted to do something with music. Mm -hmm. So I took a break and um, I wrote to music schools in the US and Canada uh -huh. to understand like if I could get into a undergrad or master's degree program because I'd already done my education, I was working and they said, you know, oh, to be able to get into an undergrad program, you have to have teaching experience. And I thought to myself, oh my God, like how can I teach? Like I only have very limited experience just learning mm -hmm. for myself. But then I took a break and I started uh, teaching myself how to play the piano, how uh -huh. to play the guitar, uh, worked on my singing. I started taking some Western vocal lessons in India. And from there, I got an opportunity to teach at a school. They were looking for a teacher. Mm -hmm. And over there, um, what they had was they had like grade one, grade two, grade three, like you teach uh, music. Yeah. But they had a class for kids with needs. Needs like maybe they had autism, um, you know, oh. developmental disabilities or mm -hmm. intellectual disabilities. Yeah. Um, they might have autism. And they put them together and they were like, teach them music. Mm -hmm. So... I tried to teach them music in the regular ways that I knew and um, and I saw that it was complete chaos like they were not connecting they were actually not it didn't seem like they were benefiting from it and so I tried to research like how can music help you know children with autism and mm -hmm. I started reading up things and I found out about music therapy yeah. and the scope in India at that, around that time was yeah. like almost zero you know mm -hmm. in 2016 when I was reading up so yeah that's when i understood about music therapy and i started looking up schools where there were degree programs uh, structured programs for music therapy and education and that so i moved to canada i did a whole undergrad degree again in music performance i had some jazz courses and then i did a um, graduate diploma in music therapy and a master's and and yeah that's uh, that's how it all started and that's how i ended up in canada yeah wow. it's it's like, uh, it sounds to me like music therapy was meant to you. It's like you, you were searching for it, you didn't know exactly, but yeah. you reached it at the end. It's like yeah. something you had inside, isn't it? I agree. I do think there's some, some kind of serendipity in the way it all came yeah. together. Like you're right, I couldn't articulate what I was looking for, but mm -hmm. I wanted to see direct impact. And I wanted to use music and I just didn't know there's something like music therapy, um, you know, almost a decade ago I didn't, so, mm -hmm. yeah. And then uh, it comes the Canadian Music Therapy Fund and uh, I think it's important, we'll see like the whole, we'll, we'll try to see like the whole branches, yeah. 
But uh, how do you connect with the Canadian music therapy fund? And we'll get later at, well, to its history. Yeah. So I think the unique uh, aspect about the Music Therapy Center is that we are run by a nonprofit. So uh-huh. what we are doing is we're trying to reach out to people uh, from underserved communities who may face socioeconomic disadvantage, uh-huh. um, you know, financial barriers. So the Canadian Music Therapy Fund is always doing like fundraising events. Um, you know, we are a registered charity, so there are individual donors like you and me who could donate. Um, and that's what helps us to sort of subsidize rates for our clients or give them fully funded sessions if that's what they need. Uh, part of my role is also to, you know, write grants and reach out to family foundations um, and uh, reach out to government organizations that can support uh, our programming. And um, so that's the that's the mission of the Canadian Music Therapy Fund is to reach our communities and make our services inclusive and equitable so that, you know, if one needs it, you know, they're not constrained by affordability or they're not aff- constrained by accessibility. And that's what our mission is that, you know, anyone who needs it, um, we can we can offer it to them. Mm-hmm. Uh, behind you, there's a wow, big tree. Uh, but uh, on the m- on my right, on your left, uh, we are seeing now a picture of the who are they? Because they have a yeah. big chick. Yes. Big chick. So Fran Herman is actually, uh, you know, she's lovingly known as the person who started music therapy. She is like she was the first music therapist in Canada, oh. mm-hmm. and it was her dream and mission to. Because usually the way music therapists are contracted is either they yeah. work at a hospital or mm. they're working in a school or a hospice mm-hmm. or a rehabilitation center. But her dream was that there can be a space where people can just come for music therapy and can have that, you know located in a in a way that everyone can access it so it was her dream and and at that time the music industry was booming so we did get a huge uh, as you saw the check you know to mm-hmm. get us started and that's how we set up this space uh, you know we have two rooms that are fully equipped with music therapy instruments mm-hmm. um and you know otherwise it's 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 challenging because music therapists have to drag all the instruments around you know from yeah. a hospital to another place where they might be working um, it's not easy so it was her dream that everything can be you know well placed here and along with her over the last 20 years we've had all these donors that you see on the leaves mm-hmm. um, you know every time someone gives us a substantial amount yeah. of funding that can help us run our programs for at least a year we present them with a leaf um, and so you'll see like there's Universal Concerts, there's Music Canada and there's many other uh, people on this um, that have supported us and it's truly without without their support we couldn't have you know continued. So, no. Yeah. Yeah. In, in this sense you also have programs. You have the well the center here at uh, Broad with Dufferin yes. which is very nice which is very close to my house <laughs> and yes. also but you also have programs all around Canada? Uh, all around Ontario, I would say. Ontario. Yes, yes. yes. We do also do off-site work. Yeah. So we are a team of 12 music therapists and mm-hmm. we also have an intern right now. So we, some of us like work here, but we also hold contracts. We go to different, as I mentioned, like long-term care settings. Yeah. Uh, we might also like at a senior's homes and we also go to people's, individual's homes as well. Sometimes if that's more convenient for them. Uh, schools and yeah, so we do both off-site as well as on-site work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, how many people are actually currently working as uh, because they are music therapists, but they are certified music therapists. Is, right. is correct. That's how right. many do you have, and why it's important to be certified? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so all of our therapists are certified music therapists. Mm. Um, you know, I think it's important to understand that we all connect with music and we yeah. all have maybe used it um, to derive therapeutic value from it, you know, maybe to relax ourselves, just listen mm. to some music when maybe our mood is not great or just to ground ourselves. But that is not music therapy. And music therapy needs to be done uh, in the presence of someone who has uh, the knowledge of how to use music safely because sometimes uh, songs can trigger us in ways that 
a music therapist can hold space for and mm-hmm. can redirect their um, you know insights and emotions and can support the client so i think it's uh, important to you know and music therapists undergo like extensive training and clinical supervision um, to be able to sort of get that you know certification and license to practice as music therapists so um, that's why I think it is important to be certified, um, just like any other therapist, psychotherapist. Like, you know, it's different when we listen to a podcast about therapy versus actually going for therapy, uh, doing it with a, you know, a registered therapist. Uh, um, it's different and it's important to hence be certified if one wants to sort of practice this um, profession. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We've been talking with Brittany previously yes. and uh, she is uh, certified from a lawyer, Wilfrid Lawyer, That's I right. think. So yeah. I think you have an agreement with them, but there are also the different institutions which offer different programs. Is it correct? That's right. I think currently um, there are five uh, universities uh-huh. that offer a music therapy program. And uh, our Canadian Association of Music Therapists lists all of that information, like where are the programs like Concordia University in Montreal, yeah. Laurier here. Um, so there's Acadia University. So there is, I think, even UFT has now started a program yeah. um, that's not just music therapy. It's a little bit broad, but you can uh, use that program to get your licensing. So, yeah, so we do, we do, um, we're always in constant engagement with them because every program sort of has an internship period yeah. and that's when they reach out to us and yeah thousand, thousand hours so. that's right yeah thousand hours that are clinic, uh, supervised as well yeah mm-hmm. and uh, you said you started uh, singing are you still singing yeah i think uh personally for me part of it is yeah. that i want to be able to um, use Indian classical music and explore it, uh, you know, with international audiences mm-hmm. and see what, how, how do they connect with it? Because I could, I, you know, I connected with that music, mm-hmm. but I know it's uh, culturally relevant for yeah. me and I find value in it, but I have used it in, uh, you know, meditation experiences mm-hmm. and I've used it with people, um, you know, to just do like a guided visualization and they have traveled with my voice and, um, uh, you know, to understand what comes up for them, how do they connect with it. And so it's been interesting and um, I'm trying to advocate for Indian classical music. And so I do take on projects from time to time. And I try to use that with my clients if if it feels clinically appropriate, if I think yeah. uh, it might be of help to them in some way and they could access it. So, yeah, so that's what, so I do still sing uh, and that's my personal training. I continue to train in that form of uh, music. And I try to use it whenever I think it's appropriate with my clients. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you dare to sing something now? <laughs> In Indian classical? Yeah, 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 absolutely. I mean, sure. Um, you know, I can just, uh, I can sing actually just to give context. You know, it's sure. the same seven notes. Uh-huh. So, you know, if I sing the seven notes in the Western classical way, it would be <clears throat> Do, Re, Mi, Fa. So la ti do or si do. I um, mean, it depends. Yes, in, in Spanish si, but I know yeah. it's ti. Yeah. yeah. Um, but so in Indian classical, the same seven notes are approached as. So you know, it's the same seven notes, but you know, it's just the way you touch every note is different and just that has different value and meaning and the emotions that are evoked for different people in different contexts so yeah 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 that's that's good to know that's it's more like a continuum mm. it's like you within western we try to like uh, differentiate the seven notes and it's more like like a continuum yeah i got it like we touch the previous note as we touch the next note mm. yeah yeah mm. so yeah, so I think, um, and then there's many modes, different modes, where we eliminate some notes uh, in the same scale. And then that evokes a different emotion. It could be melancholic, it could be happy, it could, or people could associate it with it in different ways. And so I improvise in, in that uh, style. Yeah, And I sometimes I set up instruments, like on the piano, I will put stickers on uh, notes 
that are very uh, Indian classical scales yeah. and people can right. connect with it and they can play and you know I talk to them about how does it feel like sometimes it's like oh this is an interesting sound for my ear like you know it reminds me of the water or it might reminds me of uh, my best friend from seven years ago anything and and then takes you deeper to deeper places yeah yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely and remembering there was a comic book called the oriental piano which was okay. uh, about a um, musician from Lebanon from Lebanon okay and uh, he was trying to um, mixed to assemble Western and Eastern music and to try to make that kind of piano which could mm, uh -huh. uh, is the, the blending between them all. Well, very, very interesting. I, I, and I it's, love it's based on, on facts, it's yeah. um, coming based on facts. Yeah. I've also actually worked with some jazz musicians in Montreal and we've done, mm -hmm. you know, he, like uh, the pianist improvised like jazz piano while I did Indian classical and just the, the connection and the intersections and the beauty that emerged it was yeah i think that's the the fun part about music it's a global language but it, the interpretation is so different and so beautiful from different parts of the world yeah yeah there are lots of places where you can link with each other like that you say mm -hmm. when you say the jazz and uh, well what I know, I think the two what I know of Indian classical is uh, most from you. That so uh, I, I didn't know anything about it. That there can be some some links like uh, something with I think of Spanish flamenco or mm -hmm. some this kind of, of yes. uh, folk music. Yes. But uh, well, as we see, uh, music serves gives us lots of feelings. So imagine for someone who's thinking, okay, this is very interesting but maybe it's not for me mm -hmm. because uh, sometimes we don't realize that uh, uh, well some things can work out for us until somebody says oh this could work out for you yeah. what uh, kind of uh, clients what kind of people come here and mm -hmm. what do you do how music help them in general yeah uh, that's a good question you know it's there are many situations where music mm -hmm. therapy might be completely contraindicated sometimes, uh, mm -hmm. you know, but again, it's so individualistic, like, yeah. you know, maybe if two people come in with um, their goal is to feel supported through their depression, uh, one person might really connect with music therapy, but one person might feel even more triggered in that space or be negatively responding. So it's hard to say. Um, you know, someone might enjoy listening to music, but may not want to go deeper with that uh, in, in a music therapy setting. So that's why we do assessments. We, yeah. you know, do two weeks of assessments, sometimes longer if required. And, um, and it's a process, like it's a process that people engage in. I think um, it's worth trying to find out because it's, you know, it's such a non-intrusive sort of uh, way of doing therapy. Um, and it's creative, it's sort of indirect because the music is facilitating the therapeutic process because sometimes it can be overwhelming to just talk about your challenges or problems and so music, when music is there, it's not as overwhelming or feeling so directed at you, you know and you're processing by songwriting, you're processing through improvisation mm -hmm. uh, you're processing through song sharing um, so I would not say that uh, there are certain people who cannot benefit from it, but the kind of clients that we have here are, um, we have children who have uh, kids with disabilities, you know, intellectual disabilities, developmental disabilities. We have teenagers who have mental health needs. Uh, we run a program for adults with physical disabilities um, that come here. So it's a very diverse sort of very diverse demographic, very diverse like diagnosis. Um, there's also people just uh, working in corporate jobs and they need something um, and it's called the guided imagery and music program. It's called GIM. That's more for people who are cognitively independent, can make decisions, but need something to feel regulated and to just navigate day to day stress and life and and there's a music program uh, for for that and yeah so it's pretty diverse i would say yeah okay so if we want to contribute to donate maybe we can't equal that uh, shakes you have on your on your left 
<laughs> but uh, it's uh, through the or even to have more information through your website, isn't it? That's right. Yeah, you can uh, you can also find us on Canada Helps if you just type Canadian Music Therapy Fund, mm -hmm. and you can directly donate there if you feel like. Um, and otherwise on our website and we do come up with a community report every year um, yeah. and uh, you know you can see what how your donation helps us we constantly put updates on our Instagram uh, the mm -hmm. Canadian Music Therapy Fund page um, yeah so you can follow us there and you can see if you ever feel compelled and you know even uh, sometimes people think it's a small donation but all of it counts all of it helps us um, yeah, and always you're welcome to come by the center, see our space, meet mm -hmm. us. We're always uh, looking to meet people because so many people don't know what music therapy is and yeah. you know what what happens. So we're always open to welcoming people and, and discussing and talking about it. Yeah, that's good to know. Yeah. Anything else you want to say or want to talk about? Um, no, I think I'm very grateful, Antonio, that you uh, thought of talking about music therapy. Mm -hmm. You know, we're really trying to advocate for our services mm -hmm. and reach people, especially, you know, like as I said, uh, who are underserved, mm -hmm. marginalized communities. And, mm -hmm. you know, uh, just being able to do that sort of public outreach through you, um, that helps us. So thank you for coming by and interviewing Greeny and me today. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>